stepped out into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Sing with me everybody Here I am to worship Here I am to bow down Here I am to sing together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin. see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Lakewood Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is a pleasure to be worshiping together with you here today. I also want to welcome our uh, friends joining us on Zoom as we do every Sabbath. It is a, a joy when we can all be together in fellowship here in the house of the Lord. I just want to take a minute, and while we run through some announcements, if you would please just put your phones on silent or take a minute to turn your phones to vibrate. We have a very special Sabbath today, if you had a chance to glance at the bulletin. Um, we have baptisms today, amen? And we have a very special time of communion that will follow. So... We do have a prayer hour schedule to take place on the first Sabbath of July. That's July 6th. Um, that will be taking place after potluck. So our potluck for the month of July will be on the first Sabbath, July 6th, followed by a very special prayer hour that the prayer team is organizing. You will hear more information about that um, next Sabbath. Laura will have a spotlight on that. Our registration is open for VBS, so I have seen a few of those registrations come through. So please go ahead and sign up your kids um, if they would like to join us for VBS this year. And we're also always looking for volunteers for that. You can see the dates on the screen also in the bulletin. And we do have a communion service that is taking place today. Um, I'm going to invite Salathiel to come up because he also has an announcement pertaining to men's ministries. But I also invite you to take a look at your bulletin because there are some prayer tent outreach dates that we would also love for you to get involved in. Good morning. <clears throat> I have spoken to a number of people individually, but I'll speak to the church on this. I don't feel that as men, we support each other, pray together, worship together as we should. Now, the ladies tend to do a great job on that, but guys, we just get stressed out and drop dead. So we're trying to avoid that here. We have a men's ministry meeting that we're going, that's going to take place immediately after the church service. The plan today is just to 
talk and again to get to know each other a little better. And then we also I wanted everyone's inputs with regards to activities going forward. So I just wanted to remind all the gentlemen, and this includes sons, grandsons, nephews, uh, we're going to be getting together for the men's ministry group right here in the back of the church, and we're going to talk about a few things immediately following the service. Thank you. Thank you. It is wonderful that we are having an, an active um, men's ministry here. Just a couple more announcements. If you would like some prayer one-on-one -on -one after the service, our elders and Pastor Q, they are available um, for that. Please, please reach out to them. And on our Zoom, prayer meetings take place every night, except Friday night. So we welcome you to join us. You can find that link on our website. Sly, would you come forward for our opening prayer? Good morning, church family. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the Sabbath that we could come and find rest, but also that it's such a high Sabbath with both communion as well as baptisms. Um, please be with all of us as we participate in the service, be with Pastor as he shares a message, and also be with our baptismal candidates, and let us all just enjoy the Sabbath. In your name, amen. Our first song today is entitled Holy Spirit, and I, I want to invite us to stand. And as we stand, um, I want to encourage us to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts, into our minds. Oftentimes, our weeks are full of um, challenges. Our weeks are full of obstacles or things that just get in the way. But today, right now, is a wonderful, sacred time for us to invite the Spirit into our hearts and let's sing together, Holy Spirit. There's nothing worth more That could ever come close Nothing can come back Your Tasted and seen of the sweetest of lies when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are. and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. Your Sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are. Yes. 
place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I long for to be. experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Please be seated. At this time, we will invite our deacons to come forward to collect the offering this Sabbath. Our loose offering is going towards the Ohio Conference. So as the deacons come forward, they will be collecting our tithes and offerings, and we will have a prayer at the end. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to give back what you ask and perhaps to give a little more from our hearts. Um, the importance of this is tantamount. It really shows us where our hearts can be because when we separate our money from our wallets and put it to the good use that, that you have, it's a wonderful des um, demonstration to the universe that you are God, and then you work on hearts. So let these funds go to where they are allocated to go. Let them be used for your good work 
and for the spreading of this gospel and the world, the message that this world desperately needs. We thank you in Jesus Christ also for the service of these young men. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. We are continuing our service with a beautiful hymn, day by day. And with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my troubled trials here. Let's join our voices together and sing this hymn, hymn number 532. And which is passing moment Strength I find To mean my trials here Trusting in My Father's wise bestowment Have no cause For worry or for fear He whose heart is kind beyond a measure gives unto each day what he deems best knowing me is part of pain and pleasure mingling toy with peace and rest is near me with a special mercy for each child all my cares he fain will bear and cheer me he whose name is counselor and God the protection of his child is a charge that on himself he lay as thy days thy strength shall be in measure this the pledge to me he makes help me then Every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation, offer me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when torn. To take as from a father's hand, one by one, the days of moments fleeting, till I reach the promised land. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, there to take. From a father's head, one by one, the days, the moments fleeting till I reach the promised Testing one, two, three. Here we go. Did you love that song? Yes. Amen. I'm going to invite the baptismal candidates to please come forward at this time. Uh, Myra and Philip, I'm going to ask also that uh, Cliff and Jennifer, if you wouldn't mind coming forward. 
And if you are an elder, I'd like for you to also come forward at this time. You know, about a month ago, about a month ago, I made a call. And in that call, these young people came forward. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. It's really exciting. And while I was, while I was, uh, while this song was going on and and everything was happening, I kept getting this impression. Yeah, please, come on up here. I kept getting this impression, Pastor, you need to let somebody else do the Bible studies. And I'm going, who? Who could that be? And then all of a sudden, I look up there and I see Cliff. And I look at Cliff, and the impression says, yes. And I look at Cliff, and I go, come here, please. And of course, Cliff goes like, who, me? And I said, come here, please. And he has been able to be giving these young people Bible studies. And I'm going to tell you what, their Bible studies aren't done. Because even though they're being baptized today into Jesus... And becoming a part of this church, they have yet to begun a work of reaching somebody else. Amen? Amen. And that baptismal robe that you will see is a gift from the Columbia Union Conference. And what they will be doing with that is that, and I remember the the charge, is that they're going to take that baptismal robe home. They're going to launder it. And then they're going to start praying for somebody they can give it to. Amen? Amen? And they're going to bring those people here, and they're going to get baptized into that room. And what I've got to start doing is buying getting a lot more robes. Amen? (laughs) But it's at this moment in time that we are here. And I've got a few questions that I want to ask them as we begin And those questions are just simple. Do you believe that there is the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in that? Amen. Amen. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ as your personal Savior for your sins? Amen. Even before I'm done. (laughs) That's how exciting this is. Do you renounce the world in its sinful ways and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? And yes. do you believe that God, for his sake, has forgiven your sins? Yes. Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing him as the intercessor in heaven? And do you claim the promise that he will give you strength and fill you with the Holy Spirit? Yes. yes. Amen. Do you believe that the Bible is still important, that it is God's word for today? I mean, yes. yeah, of course. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This boy is going to be preaching soon. I can see it, Manny. Put him on the list. Do you accept the spiritual teachings and spiritual gifts, and do you believe that God has gifted you with something important to share with this church? Yeah, of course. Exactly. Exactly. Are you being baptized today as a public testimony of your faith in Jesus in the hopes that others will see Jesus in you and will make this decision to follow? Yes, Pastor. Yes. Amen. And with that said, subject to baptism, is there a motion to accept them into the Lakewood Seventh-day Adventist Church? Look at your family out there. I don't even need to take a second. But what I will say, all in favor, say amen. Amen. Say amen. 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 And so what I want to do, because normally we bring them up after the worship service, We have a special prayer, so we're going to, as elders, we're going to lay our hands upon them now, and we're going to ask that God begin a work in them, because I truly believe, as you are a witness, that God's about ready to use use these individuals in a powerful way. Amen? Let's pray. Let's put our hands upon them. Over here, Cliff. (laughs) Jennifer, you too. Grab your husband's hand. All right. Father in heaven, we as the leaders of the Lakewood Seventh-day Adventist Church recognize that you brought these two here, brother and sister, to be baptized today. And what we're asking, we're pleading, we're begging, we're praying 
that you will fill them with the Holy Spirit in such a mighty way that the city of Lakewood will rock in a powerful, powerful way. And may that begin here in this congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And we're going to separate at this time. And uh, Shirley will just follow Shirley, and she will take care of you. Um, And then Andrea. Well, while Philip and, and Myra and Pastor Q are getting ready for the baptism, we want to take this time to have a special spotlight with someone that is familiar to us. So a few weeks ago, uh, if you were here, you remember that Dr. Jason Tiener came. He gave a presentation about his upcoming medical mission trip to Uganda, and we felt moved to take up um, an offering for this specific trip. And with your support, with your generosity, we as a church raised over $2,000. And the church matched up to $2,000. So all together, we were able to provide Jason and the organization, and the organization with over $4,000 for this trip. And so what we want to do right now is invite Jason to come up. He's back from his trip and he's got plenty to share. And we just wanted to give the church an opportunity to also hear about the work that that you've done. All right. I'm Jason. Um, Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the donations, the support, the prayers. Uh, The trip was a, a success. Um, we have a short video we'll show, and I'll just kind of talk a little bit about it. So um, so we had some travel issues getting there. We left on a Saturday morning. Uh, we had a brief uh, delay in Rwanda. We were, were stuck there for a little bit and ended up not getting there till 4 in the morning on Tuesday. And then we, uh, we went to the hospital, started working at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, and then we left on Saturday. So in, in about three and a half, four days, we did... Um, seven major reconstructive surgeries, and that was for um, both benign and, and cancerous conditions of the head and neck, and also as a result of uh, complications of radiation and chemotherapy that some people had. Um, so we did seven major surgeries and two smaller surgeries, and all of that was, was done um, with, with your guys' support as part of that. And uh, Dr. Zender and Dr. Otiti wanted me to express their, their gratitude. Um, as well, just for, for all the support. Um, and in the video, you'll also see, so you'll see pictures of pretty much the trip, the group, um, some before and after pictures of some, um, you know, people with uh, jaw tumors. And then also while we were there, um, it was a 10-year anniversary of, you know, Dr. Zender and Dr. Otiti working together. And Dr. Otiti finally got his uh, fellowship officially approved. And so we were there for that ceremony, and it was uh, featured there and everything. So that was cool to be there for that. Um, and there'll be some some photos with that. So um, I think we got the, the video here. And then we're going to, yeah.
so, so that video is pretty moving. Um, can you just share very briefly, Jason, um, how you got involved in this and what are your plans going forward? Yeah, so um, Dr. Zender was my, one of my residency and fellowship attendings. Um, and so I got the interest from him. Um, I've gone on four trips with him. Um, I'd like to go once a year. You know, it hasn't worked out every year, but, um, but I'd like to do that. Um, and I don't know, I just enjoy doing it. It's always a nice refresh, you know, because you go there and come, you see how you know, lucky we are to have you know, the care we have here. Um, and so it's just always a nice reset for me um, and good just to be connected with that. So. And what a, what a touching uh, way to share the love of Jesus, right, through giving back, through, through your skills, through your, you know, the way that you can give back and also that the people of Uganda can also um, witness that, right, through the marble of medicine and through the marble of, of healing. So thank you, church, for, um, for your donations, for your support of this trip. And I'm sure, Jason, I'm putting you on the spot, but if anybody has questions for you after the oh, service, yeah, for sure. you're welcome to. Yeah, anytime. You're able to, yeah. to talk with him. Thank you. All right, thank you. We will turn the time over to Pastor Q for our, our baptisms. One at a time. He's so excited. One at a time, it's right there. <laughs> All right, before we begin this beautiful, beautiful ceremony, I'm inviting the family members if they would like, those that have a, a family, you can come right up here. Walk right up on the platform and um, to make sure that you have a front row seat of this. This is exciting. Yeah, just step right up on the platform. And if you want to walk over to this side, you can. Somebody can walk up. Mom, why don't you walk if you want. Do you feel good? You're good. Okay. All right. Anybody else that would like to get close, you may stand on, and move up so that you'll be able to see this. The one thing about having a baptismal fountain in the floor is that those that are in the back have a hard time. So if you are in the back, and you'd like to stand up and come forward, you feel free to do that at this time. What an exciting day. I want to tell you, before, before we even began, we had a young man ready to give a sermon. Amen? And so it is with great honor, not yet, not yet, not yet. It's with great honor that we, we begin this baptism. For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is not, Meyer, this is not the end of the journey. It's not a graduation. It's just the beginning. Because as you begin your walk with Jesus, I hate to say this, but you will have a bullseye on you. The enemy will come after you. But we as a family are going to be praying for my arm, am I right? Amen. And because of your love for Jesus, I now baptize you in the name of the Father who's looked forward to this moment. In the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary so that you could be washed of your sins. And the Holy Spirit that will be your comforter and your guide from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Plug your nose down. Woo. Oh, Father in heaven, I truly believe with all my heart that you are about ready to begin a work in this young lady's life that will rock this place. And Father, fill her with the Spirit as you fill Jesus with your Spirit. In your precious and holy name. Amen. All right, brother, it's now your turn. Hallelujah. Now, don't jump before I'm ready, okay? 
what an exciting time. Remember, you hold that. Uh-huh. I'm not done yet. I've got a couple of things I want to say. But I can promise you that you won't be able to get away from me. I know. All right? Okay. Well, Phil, you were the first one to come forward. Yes, yes, it's almost like there was something inside of you that said, I need to take that walk for Jesus. Yes. And when you took a walk for Jesus, you brought tears into this congregation. And I know that you brought tears into your family. Yes, I did. And one of the things that I remember talking, your mother said to me, what? this is something your mom said, what? the greatest joy, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but yes. the, greatest joy the greatest joy is to bring their children to Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And because of your love for Jesus and your desire to serve him, oh, yeah. I now baptize you in the name of the Father who's been waiting for this moment. In the name of the Son who walked the Via Della Rosa and died on Calvary to wash you from your sins, and the Holy Spirit that will be your comforter and your guide from this day forward. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yeah, here we go. Plug your nose. Here we go down. Oh, hallelujah. Let's pray. Father in heaven. We are so excited for the work that you're about ready to do in Philip's life. So, Father, I want to thank you for pouring out your spirit. May your spirit even be seen more than it was today. As you fill Jesus with your spirit, fill my brother with your spirit, too. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And while they're leaving, I, I... I'd be remiss to not give the invitation that maybe there's someone here today that has seen you, that has seen the Lord work in these young people's lives, and you're saying, you know what, I'd like to take that same walk too. I'd like to give my life to Jesus Christ in baptism. You don't have to do it now, but before you leave today and with the Spirit working so hard on your life, make sure that you tell my brother Manny back there, myself, or any of the elders or the deacons that are here, because we want you to experience Jesus also. Amen. Amen. We invite Tessa to come forward, and she will bring us our scripture reading this afternoon. Psalm 27, 4 through 5. Now one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent. Thank you. While... um, Myra and Philip and Pastor Q are getting changed. We want to spend some time singing this beautiful hymn together with you, Give Me Jesus. And may it be the prayer that we each pray every day for Jesus to enter into our hearts, enter into our minds, into our lives. Let's sing Give Me Jesus, hymn 305.
at this time that we are about ready to separate for what we practice in the Seventh-day Adventist Church is what we call the Ordinance of Humility. It's an opportunity for us to wash our one another's feet. And why? Because Jesus, when he was in the upper room with his disciples, realized that they weren't hearing anything he was saying. And so he knelt down, took off his garment picked up a basin and a towel, and he washed their feet. They were all taken back, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And so you're not going to understand it now, but you will understand it later. That the beginning of communion is always about service to one another. And we've seen the Holy Spirit working in a beautiful way here in the church today. You can say amen to that. We've enjoyed the music, and I believe that there was some singing in that upper room. But at this moment, we're going to depart. The men or the couples and families will be going downstairs. The women will stay here in the back. The men will be going to the gym. But if you're not feeling comfortable or if you don't understand and say, you know, Pastor, I, 
I've never heard of this before. Is it all, all right if I just watch? And the answer is? Yes. Absolutely. Because I've got something I want to share with you after we're done. I want to bring a very important point out with a little small message. And I believe that that's what Jesus did. And remember, we are a church that is all about imitating Jesus. So, as we depart, we will be coming back with Jesus on our mind. Amen? We're going to have somebody playing lightly on the guitar. Uh, He just found that out, but he will be. Um, We'll be playing so that you would be able to enter in into an atmosphere of worship, reverence, and asking yourself, God, what is it that you want me to hear today? And as we prayed last night, the elders and I, what we want, our intentions are not hidden. We want the communion service to speak to you so that you are so filled with Jesus that you just want more. Amen? Amen? So at this moment, I'm inviting you to dismiss. Once again, the couples are downstairs. Families are downstairs. Women, you may stay elderly. You can stay here. Um, And then the men, you may go over to the gymnasium. You are dismissed at this time. What an exciting day. Approximately in 2005, I was walking through the um, boiler closet at the Kalamazoo Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I stumbled across a picture that was collecting cobwebs and dust. That picture is right there. That is the picture that I pulled out of the furnace room. Why is that so special to me? When I worked upon a doctor's yacht in southeastern Alaska, just as we went through the Prince of Wales Island, that was hanging in the bridge. And I always looked at it because I'm a very visual person. And there is something refreshing and calming about that picture. Jesus having his hands on my shoulder as I was at the helm of that 52-foot yacht. Amen? Amen? It was in years later that I had, and I, I, I claimed that and And then there was another doctor's friend of mine who put the frame on it because it had a frame. That picture had a price tag of $2.95. I think it's more value than that. When you put the frame and everything on it. But I had actually learned a lot. And I have a Navy man here, senior chief at one time. And so I'm going to use some Navy terms uh, at this moment. And I, I learned a lot about the Navy just with this one picture. Did you know that Jesus never steers your ship? There's silence. In the Navy, the captain never steers the ship. Matter of fact... In the Navy, the one steering the ship is just a seaman, first class. Am I right? Bozeman. Helmsman. But he has no rank. He's not even a petty officer yet. One of the lowest ranking individuals.
Navy is steering that aircraft carrier. And I thought, interesting, because when the captain, now there are three, you have the captain, the def, officer of the deck, and the navigator, those are the three who can take control of that ship. And so when the helmsman is steering the ship on the course that is plotted, .010, or whatever the captain says, whatever the, whatever the instruction is, that's the course that he goes. Why? Because he trusts the captain. You know, there's something to say when you are the lowest man on the totem pole. And you know that the person that's on the top has the experience, am I right? They know where that ship needs to go. But when he comes up onto the bridge, he doesn't listen to anybody else. You might have a full bridge, but the only one that he will obey is who? Whoever has the con. Whoever has the charge of that ship. And I shared that with somebody, that Jesus never takes your wheel. And someone said, well, no, Pastor, that that can't be. I, I need him to steer my ship. But listen to this, steps to Christ. God does not force the will of his creatures. He cannot accept homage, which is respectful acts, that is not willingly and intelligently given. When I was at the helm of this yacht, the captain would come in and tell me to turn on the engines. He would then tell me to turn at starboard or port, port wherever it, normally it was turn at port. Then he would tell me to put the starboard engine forward and the, and the port engine reverse. And then we would move out of the harbor at his command who was steering the ship, but who was in command of the ship. The captain was in command of that ship. And the fascinating thing that I had learned from this picture, it hangs in my office, it goes wherever I go. That picture doesn't leave me because to me it's worth a million dollars. It might have a sticker tag of 295, (laughs) but I'm going to be putting some zeros on that. But the beautiful thing is that I need to listen to the captain of the universe. There was a time when Jesus left his four stripes behind, Slathiel. He left his stars and became a seaman in planet Earth. He took on the lowest ranking Officer, not officer, but enlisted person. Not an officer, but an enlisted person. He walked amongst people constantly serving them. He healed the sick. He chased out the demons. And even though he did had he had no, there was nothing about Jesus that said. He was in charge. The demons knew that he was in charge. The demons knew that they shouldn't mess with him. They kept trying to blind humanity so that you wouldn't follow his command. But Jesus became the servant of all servants. And what's interesting is that he constantly said, I am the servant of man. He had the power over demons. He had the power over nature. He had the power over disease. And he had the power over death. And the dark world saw Jesus and they said, we can't mess with him. They still had to ask his permission. But as long as he could blind humanity, the enemy, that's all that mattered. There was an author, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, Hiram Smith. 
Hiram Smith is the creator of the Franklin Daytimer. Do you remember that, Franklin Daytimers? That's before your time. But he wrote a book about one time he was a first lieutenant. And he walked past a group of soldiers who were digging a ditch, and he noticed one man from Brooklyn, New York. And he looked at that, and the man from Brooklyn, New York, had no idea of what a pickaxe was. Nor did he know, even know how to use a pickaxe. And he was back there just beating the ground. That's all he was doing. And, and Hiram says, hey, son, do you know how to use that? Yes, sir, I sure do. He said, get out of that hole. And he takes off his shirt, and he shows him how to dig a ditch. That's leadership. When he got back off, one of the other lieutenants nudged him and says, you took off your shirt, which had your bars on them. How are people to know that you're a leader? You're in charge. And in his book, he says, you don't have to have bars to know that you're in charge. Because a true leader is somebody that leads the way. Doesn't just tell you the way, but leads the way. Amen? Amen. That was powerful. And so when Jesus came, he, he brought his disciples into the upper room. He needed to get their attention because he was about ready to take command again. He was about ready to leave the wheel and take command. But before he did, he took off his robe, knelt down, and washed their feet. Before that time... He was even subject to his mom and dad. He followed what mom and dad said. At the age of 12 to 30, it says in Luke that he subject himself to his parents. Who was in control? The parents. But here on the communion, the eve of the very first communion, Jesus does his ass last act of service. By washing their feet. Then the Bible says, So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments up, notice this, and he sat down again. Now he says, He doesn't say this any time before this. And he says, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher, you call me Lord. Oh, here it is. And you're right. I am. He just took the con. Do you know what I mean by the con? The con is the place on the ship. It's the one place when the captain has the con, that means he is now in command of the ship. Jesus takes the con, meaning he is now in charge of the world. You call me Lord. You call me captain. Yes, I am. Because from that moment on, Caiaphas asked him, are you the Lord? He said, yes, I am. Pilate, are you a king? He said, you're say right. I am a king. Caiaphas, I adjure you, tell me by the Most High, are you the Son of God? He says, yes, I am. And to let you know my first order, when I come, I'm going to raise the dead. I'm going to raise you up first. And you're going to acknowledge that I am the king of the universe. Jesus takes the leadership, putting us at the wheel. That means it's important for you to listen to what Jesus says. There's a lot of clutter. Maybe there's a lot of clutter. I don't know. Slathiel, he's been on the bridge. I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of clutter on the bridge. But the helmsman, all they listen to is who? The captain. All you need to do is listen to Jesus Christ. You listen to the Holy Spirit. And we've come here today to celebrate communion. Because communion not only tells us what Jesus did as a servant, it also tells us that he's the king of kings and lord of lords. 
It also tells us that when he sat down, he says, I'm not going to drink this cup. I'm not going to drink this cup until I can drink it anew with you in the kingdom of heaven, in my kingdom where you are my children. We have the opportunity today to witness the power and acknowledge the king and commander of the universe. When we partake of that bread, we become servants of the Most High. When we drink of that wine, unfermented juice, there is no decay in Jesus. When we drink of that juice, that pure uh, juice, we are accepting that Jesus' blood washes us from our sins. It doesn't get any better than that. That is why I tell you, I always look forward to this day. And as you've heard me say, Desire of Ages, what a beautiful book. Have you ever read that book? It says that the very angels that witnessed the very first communion, they are present at this communion now. Did you hear what I just said? There must be a lot of angels that witnessed that first communion. Because there's communions taking place all over the world, but some of those angels are in this very room right now. We have the opportunity to experience firsthand Jesus putting his hand upon our shoulder and pointing the way home. Because one day, we're not going to have small little tidbits of bread. We're going to have a feast with Jesus. And this is the opportunity for us to do that. Ladies, would you please? Jesus took the bread and he broke it and said, this represents my body that was broken for you. Every time you eat of it, you will do this in remembrance of me. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I'm going to ask my elder Sly, he's going to have the blessing upon the bread. I'm going to ask just the deacons and the elders to kneel while the rest of the congregation please remain in your seats. Father in heaven, please bless this bread, and as we eat of it, may we remember the sacrifice that you made all those years ago, how your body was broken, and may we all remember this for all eternity. Amen. Jesus said, take, eat. 
This represents my body that was broken for you. Every time you eat of it, remember what I have done to save you for eternity. Amen. For the scriptures also say, in the same way that after supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I've asked the other elder, Manny, He's going to be having a blessing upon the juice, and so I'm going to ask the deacons and the elders as they kneel and remember the rest of the congregation, just please stay in your seat. Thank you for the shedding of your blood. What could wipe? Make us so clean, as white as snow, nothing but the blood of the Lamb. Lord, you have covered us that when people would see us, they would see someone that is blameless. You would comfort us like a warm blanket, giving us peace and joy at your cost, your life. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an opportunity to reflect on your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this symbol, the blood of the Lamb, to know that in every way when we feel maybe we're worth $2.95, that you have poured your blood on us to say that, no, 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 these individuals are not only mine, they're priceless. Thank you, Lord. And I ask as we leave this place, Lord, that we would understand that we are complete We are whole because of you. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And Jesus said, every time you drink of this cup, remember the price that I paid on Calvary. Remember the sins that are being washed away. Amen. At this moment, the praise team is going to come forward. We're going to be singing our closing song. The closing song will be our benediction. You will notice that on the third verse that we will be exiting. And once the song is done, what I want you to do is to make sure that you turn to the person to the right and say, God is good. Amen. Happy Sabbath. May the blessing of God go with you today. Amen.
And we're going to do that after this closing song. Remember, the closing song is the benediction. Nobody's going to come up and have a, a prayer. Nobody's going to do anything. When we say, when we're, that last verse is done, then you just share that with your person, and then you are free to leave. Let's stand together as we sing our closing song. See when I pass to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding away subway. This troubled world is not my final home. Happy Sabbath.